Onward and upward. How is everyone doing on a fine Saturday? This week we are diving into last week's QD, which I posted just on Facebook. So all of these questions came from Facebook, from the Facebook page. Thanks for uh, connecting there on the Facebook page, and I'm reading them right now. I see Michael, Sonia, Chris, Rocky, Stuart, Thomas. So we're going to get to as many of these questions as possible, focused in all about trail and ultra running okay so let's dive in and then i'll get you the qd for next week's q a toward the end all right here we go michael asks in your video about the speed go 50k thank you michael for going back into the archive and finding an old vlog from two and a half years ago i think approximately so i'm glad you found it um in that video about the speed go 50k you mentioned that you didn't really like the course i think you called it intentionally obnoxious can you expand on that thought i think i may feel the same way what do you look for in a trail race and what is an ideal race layout for you why do you think some people are drawn to unrunnable courses that is from michael michael i love the i love that you're tuned in to a, once again an old vlog and pulling from that here we go why was the Speedgo 50K obnoxious? In case you haven't seen that vlog, check it out, upper right-hand corner. I'll try to remember to link to it. They sent Speedgoat. Uh, Carl Metzler is the, R, the uh, RD, the race director, and he created the course. And basically, the course sends you um, off trail uh, quite a few times where you're not on a trail. You're running uh, just from one point to another, and it's marked with flags, so that's nice. But I must say, I wasn't prepared for the uneven surfaces for my ankles and my feet um, on the off-trail section. So that was one thing that threw me off mentally, I must say. Also, Michael, there's points in the race where you go up to a point and then you go right back down to almost where you came from. I'm, I'm uh, talking specifically like in the first probably five miles of the course. And it's just like, ah, uh, when you're out there running, especially for, that's probably why I like Pikes Peak so much, the ascent, because you have a goal. You're going to the highest point on the mountain and with the speed go 50K, you're going up and then you come back down and then you go up and then back down. And it just got a little tedious at times. So anyway, that's what the obnoxious part was. Um, can you expand on that thought? And then what do you look for in a trail race and what is an ideal race layout for you, Michael? RDs out there, please mark the courses. In fact, shout out to the Cirque Series, which I did in Utah last year and here in Colorado. No, I didn't race it here last year. I did it out in Utah last year. The best course markings I've ever been to. I can't tell you how many times my brother and I have gone to trail races. And when you're, okay, when you're in first place, which sometimes we're in first place when we're racing, there's nobody to follow. And so you are trusting the course markings so you don't get lost. We've gotten lost. I'm not going to say many, many times, but I would say a handful of times either my brother or I have gotten lost. So I would say, Michael, make sure you talk to the RD and like dr drill into them. Like, I do not want to get lost on this course because it's, it's really, really frustrating. Okay, I'm going to leave it there, Michael. Great question. Oh, sorry. Here we go. I got a little excited there. Training for my first, this is from Sonia. Training for my first 50K in April. Two questions. What do you recommend as your longest training run? And I love that. The plan I am following has a max of 22 miles. Is that enough? And then question number two, for daily mileage, is it okay to train on roads with hills mixed in, saving trails for the weekend where I can actually train on the course? Thank you. That is from Sonia. So Sonia, that's a great question. And for my 50K, Sonia, I have a lot more confidence going into a 50K if I can hit, I know it's, I know, so 22 miles is good, but I get a lot more confidence when I can hit 25, 26, and yes, I've hit 27 miles in a training run uh, before 50K, and I feel so confident that I can actually finish the 31, 30 to 31 miles strong when I do that. So that's my, I know it's a lot, and definitely do it on a soft surface, but um, 25, 26, 27 miles is the window that I shoot for, okay, for 50Ks. Number two, for daily mileage, is it okay to train on roads? Absolutely. And with hills mixed in, absolutely. Um, I think, now, obviously, be, watch, make sure you don't have a history of bone injuries. If your volume is going to be a little higher because you're training for an ultra race, uh, make sure you don't have, like for me, I'd have to be really careful doing too much on the roads going into a 50K because I have a, I have a history of stress fractures in my legs. So that would be my only advice for that. But yeah, just make sure the roads have those hills. 
Um, we'll probably get to this later because those, that hill training is so key for the ultra distance. Okay, moving on. Good question. Chris asks, I have my first 100K trail race on the 8th of February, the TerraWare Ultra Marathon in New Zealand. My longest run to date is 62K. What's your best piece of trail running advice for me? That's from Chris. Chris, seek beauty out there. I've heard the TerraWare uh, course in New Zealand is amazing. So seek beauty out there. Just soak it up. And uh, my advice would be... Uh, 62K is good. That's a solid, solid training run. I don't think you need to go much higher than that. Um, I guess one piece of advice would be make sure uh, you know the course well, which I've talked about in the past on the channel, especially with, yeah, I've just talked about it. So if you can study the course ahead of time and get out and preview the course, that's great. Uh, make sure you have your aid station game plan dialed in. So where are the aid stations at? what nutrition is available at the aid station, and then, of course, what will you be carrying on yourself, on your, in your pack, uh, in between the aid stations, okay? And then, also, Chris, if you haven't integrated, and it might be too late. Actually, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's probably too late. Okay, but for the future, make sure you're integrating some pretty good strength training into your regimen. I think for 100Ks, 100 milers, 50 milers, I think good leg strength is critical. Um, so whether it's in the gym or body weight training at your house. All right, there you go, Chris. I hope that helps. Good question. Moving on to, uh, let's see, to Rocky. This is interesting. Any recommendations for what shoes to wear for an eight-hour endurance run? It's a three-mile looped course, half pavement, half easy dirt trail. That's interesting, Rocky. Rocky, I would, if the trail is really buffed out, I would actually, I would dabble with the idea, and I would need to see pictures of the trail. I would dabble with the idea of a maximalist road shoe. Yes, the Hoka Carbon X. I would dabble with that. I really would. I really, I don't know. Now, it depends on how making sure you're not climbing too much vertical, uh, but it sounds like it's a pretty tamed three-mile loop. I don't know. I, I actually, I'm trying to think if I would, what trail shoe I would consider. Um, gosh, I mean, I guess... Okay, okay. The Hoka Evo Speed Go. The Hoka Evo Speed Go. That was because it's 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 got some good lug depth, meaning the the outsole traction, but it's not crazy aggressive in my opinion. That those laws, so you could definitely run on the roads with a Hoka Evo Speed Go, and it's very lightweight. So I guess I'm giving you two Hoka shoes as options. I'll leave it there. Good question. That is from Rocky. Moving on. To Stewart. Here we go. I haven't even read this one. Let's see. What percentage do you think it's mind over body when running a 100-mile ultra? I'm far from the fittest runner you will ever meet, but I'm strong-willed and made my legs complete uh, and made my legs complete a 100-mile ultra in April 2019. Congrats, Stewart. Stewart, I mean, a percentage? You said a percentage, so I will give you a percentage, but man, I think it's really, really critical uh, to have a strong mind and honestly, Stuart, I dropped out of my first 100-mile race. I blame it a little bit on my plantar fasciitis, but at the end of the day, I'm not sure I was willing to push myself through that pain to get, I, I dropped out at 50 miles, and so was I strong enough up here? I would say I, pro, I probably was. I also think I had too, too high of expectations of finishing, let's say, like top 20, top 15, maybe top 10, and once that dream slipped away of finishing high, I think my, my mind really started to beat myself up. So, Stuart, I think it's very critical. <sighs> okay, I'm going to go, I'm actually going to say physical is really critical. But I'm going to go 60% physical, 40% mental. I don't know, because you, you asked, I don't know if that even makes, I think that's a little hard to answer, but I will go six, because I do think you need to be ready to rock and roll physically, but that brain is really powerful too. Anyway, to at least run it well. Moving on, good question. Okay, let's see, from Chris. Depending on the elevation gain of the race you are training for, how much elevation should you aim to run each week? Yes, it does really matter what the course is like. For me, Chris, in the summertime, a good rule of thumb that I shoot for, which I, I realize, depending on where you live, if you don't, I have access to some big mountains here in Colorado, but I think a great rule of thumb is like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say that, okay, I'm trying to broaden the answer to that three to 5,000 feet of vertical gain per week. 
And again, depending on the course you're getting ready for, if it's a, if it's a flat 50K, then that could, that could definitely come down. But um, there's nothing like vertical gain to strengthen your legs for the longer races. You know, anything, especially anything over uh, the 40 mile mark. 50Ks are long, but anything over 40 miles, I think that's when it starts to get really, really difficult. So good question from Chris. I'm gonna put out that three to 5,000 foot of feet of elevation gain. Okay, moving on here. Oh my goodness, there's so many questions. I can't get to all of them. This is from Benjamin. How many marathons should someone have run before attempting a 50 miler? That's an interesting one, Benjamin. Um, I would say my gut is telling me three. I think if you can get three marathons under your belt, I think you could start to think about a 50 miler. But Benjamin, I would say, don't do that. Go to 50K first, okay? So go marathon, 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 50K, 50K, and then start to think about that 50 miler distance because it is, it is a long ways. I just tell you, it is a long ways as you probably already know. So I would say don't quite make that leap uh, to straight to 50. Okay, moving on here. Oh my goodness. Brian asked, would I consider running the Tarawera? Absolutely, down in New Zealand. Um, this is from Tommy. This is interesting. Oh boy. And actually, we just talked about this on today's blog that published this morning. Tommy asked, would a carbon plate trail shoe work? And do you think they are in development? Um, I think they would probably work, Tommy. And I suspect that we're going to see it happen. Ah, it's an interesting, I haven't put much thought into that. So it's a good question. I, yeah, I think carbon plates can help you on the trails. I'm not going to argue against that. And um, I wouldn't be, listen, if running shoe companies can innovate before other running shoe companies, I would suspect that they're going to. Anything to push the envelope and sell more running shoes. So good question from Tommy. Moving on here. Um, Dan asks, how do you manage the transition from having one kid to more than one kid while also training? Uh, okay, so that's interesting, Dan. It kind of connects to trail and ultra running, but um, um, Dan, you need to have a spouse that is there for you. I'm going to leave it there. That's, I could go on and on for so long about that, Dan, but I, I'm telling you, it's teamwork makes the dream work. You got to have a spouse that is really in support of your running. If not, there's going to be friction there and that's no fun. You don't want that. So have a, yeah, just talk it out with your spouse. Make sure you come up with a game plan for your training. Okay, moving on here to Josh. Oh, this might be, let's see, how long is this? Okay, it's kind of, it's kind of long. Here we go. I started using my vest this week. Only have about 20 miles invested into it. The raid light, uh, the, the one I have. Uh, race vest is near perfect. Thanks for the suggestion. My only issue is today I noticed my rib cage is getting uh, pretty tender to the touch around the area, the lower area of the bottles hit. I wore it relatively tight each time and on top of clothes. Do you have any tips or will this go away eventually? My 50K trail race is in April, but realistically, I don't think I will need a vest. Um, so Josh, I think you, I think, okay, that's tough. I'm sorry that your, your ribs are hurting. That's no fun. I think you will, I remember like, when I'm using a vest a lot, my, I, I, I feel the same pain. Like you do get a little sore where the bottles rest on your body. Now they should be soft flasks. I hope you're using soft flasks. And so that should help. And I think you will get used to it. I know I have in the past. Um, and I would agree that for a 50K, just so everybody knows, I think if you, I don't know, I've, I've raised 50Ks with no vest and just a bottle, a handheld bottle. Okay, so I think it can be done. Yeah, good question, Josh, but hope, let me, hopefully your ribs are feeling better soon. Okay, moving on here. Uh, Jin, J Jin Jung asks, when I watch videos of people accomplishing 100 mile races, they often have a crew slash pacer, te pacer team helping them out. Is it possible to finish these races without the help of a pacing or a crew? And Jin, Jin Jung, absolutely. You can, you can run a hundred, you can run a 200 mile race, um, but with, with no crew. But I would say it helps, it helps mentally to have a crew. It helps somebody to have a, an accountability uh, partner out there when you're, when you're just so tired and you hurt so bad and just to talk it out with someone and somebody that knows you really well, physically and mentally, so critical. But Jin, just make sure that you find a race that, ha that is known for incredible aid station support. Not just the food that is provided, but the actual volunteers 
at the aid stations. Um, I think the Run Rabbit Run 100, even though I ended up dropping out of that race, I was blown away by the support staff at the aid stations. I literally, somebody receiving me at the aid station, like asking me, are you okay? How are you doing? What food do you need? Where's your drop bag, et cetera, et cetera. So Jin, um, just make sure you find races that have great aid stations and it just ta it takes a little bit of research, but um, good question. I love that question. Okay, moving on here. Oh boy, okay, I, I, I think we'll take um, two, maybe three more, two or three more. Uh, Jeff asks, I ran my first 50K in December and will be running my first 50 miler in May. I love the progression, good job, Jeff. How long do you think my long run should be towards the end of training for the 50 miler? Should I do back-to-back -back long runs Saturday and Sunday? I'm working on base building again and trying to keep my long runs to 25 to 30% of my weekly mileage but realize the percentage might be thrown off for those two to three weeks of longest run. So Jeff, good questions. Um, for a 50 miler, okay, I, I'm not saying I've, um, I'm not an, a 50 miler expert, but based on my 50K training and my 100 miler training, um, Jeff, I would say, oh, okay. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you that 30 to 35 mile long run range. I know it's a lot, but I think if you can hit 30 to 35 miles twice, no more, I don't think you need more than twice in your, per, in your progression up to the, the race in May, I think that'll set you up for really solid confidence and aerobic base and more importantly, uh, leg strength, okay? And okay, I should, a, a big caveat and asterisk, Jeff, and for everyone, it depends on how much vertical is happening in these long runs, okay? If you're doing 10,000 feet of vertical over 30 miles, that's a lot. That's, that's, that's like, don't do that. Um, so it also depends on the vertical gain. In fact, one last point, I think when, not now, but when I train for another 100 mile race down the road, I personally am gonna focus more on vertical gain over volume. Obviously, obviously depending on the course, but uh, I think leg strength from the vertical gain is more important than how many miles I ran on a long run, okay? So, oh, food for thought. I think it's, did you ask another question? Oh yeah, back-to-back -back long runs, love it. Absolutely love it. For those that don't know, getting ready for ultra races, it's a pretty common practice now, uh, uh, training, training practice to do back-to-back -back long runs on uh, consecutive days just to, so that you run long, you run, you know, maybe 22 miles Saturday and 28 miles uh, Sunday. Why? So Sunday, your legs are tired and you're starting tired so that when your legs get tired after a marathon and you're only halfway through the race, you can adapt, your, your, your body is ready for that, that pain, essentially, because uh, it is painful. It is painful. Good question from Jeff. Those are some, some thoughts for you. I hope that helps. Okay, Oscar asks, do you see any benefits to your ultra running performance for having switched to, to shorter races? It's clearly been a smart move as you've as you're producing some amazing results at the shorter distances. Thank you, Oscar. Also, on a related note, what would what made you originally focus on ultras and what made you stop? Oh, Oscar, great questions, great questions, Oscar. So, uh, for those that don't know, I'm now focused on road marathon races. Why did I switch, Oscar? Well, I DNF'd at that hundred mile race. One of the reasons I DNF'd is like my I was tired at 50 miles, like. And like my legs are kind of small, and like compared to all the other guys around me that I was racing, I was I'm kind of a small guy, and so that was a wake up call for me. Like, wait a minute, is my body really made for this hundred mile distance? And then I realized, Oscar, wait a minute, I still have a little bit of turnover left. I, I'm 34 now. I was 33 when I did no, I was 34 when I did Amsterdam, but I I was I, I was doing some time trials here in Denver that at a pretty at elevation solo in like 111, some half marathons in one hour, 11 minutes. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. I wonder what I could do at sea level. So it just got me, anyway, Oscar, that's why I made the switch is that I want to use the speed in my legs while I have it, okay? So I'm going to return to ultra races at some point, uh, but that's down the road when I'm a little older and a little, I'll just say a little slower, okay? Uh, what was the other one? Um, has it benefited? 100%. So for those that want to run fast, go run an ultra race and put your body through some really difficult training mentally and physically. 
And it honestly, like the marathon just doesn't scare me at all, like at all. So that's one benefit of going from ultras back to marathons. Oscar, you, that might be my favorite question today. Okay, moving on here. One more. Um, let's see. From Mik Mikolaj Jonashki. Sorry, that's a great, I can't say it, but that's a great name. Do you think trail marathons would hurt my prep for a road marathon? Um, and then he goes on with a couple more. Should I stick to the roads, let's say by September or sooner? Anyway, uh, it's kind of a long question, but Mikolaj, I, I think if you want to race a fast road marathon, you should focus on road racing ahead of time. Will it hurt you that much? Not crazy amounts, um, but I do think that turnover and that speed on the roads, uh, the, the trails, I like the trails, as I mentioned a couple days ago, to help my legs stay healthy, uh, but I don't think it, it does not help my turnover and my speed. But getting onto soft surfaces with different angles for my feet and my legs and my knees, I think is a good thing. So Mikolaj, I would try to focus on the marathon, uh, the, the, the roads before your road marathon, specifically a half marathon about three to four, maybe five weeks before, sorry, four to five weeks before your actual marathon, a road half marathon. Okay, everyone, thank you for the questions. That was amazing. I hope you gleaned a little information there from my experience with ultra running, and I'm excited to return to ultra running. Honestly, it's probably another two or three years away. Yeah, where I, I'll probably do like a couple 50Ks in the next two or three years, but I'm in no rush to return to the 50 milers and 100 milers. I'm excited to someday, UTMB, oh man, Leadville, Hard Rock. I'm gonna, I, yeah, absolutely. I wanna do all those, but right now, I'm just excited to go a little faster on the roads. I got nothing against the trails and ultra running. And that question of the day for next week, which I will pull from Twitter. All right, so if you're on Twitter, you can ask me there. And then also down in the comments below this video. So cutie, here we go. What questions do you have for me about trail uh, training and racing shoes? What, you know, whatever you want to ask about trail racing, and it could be ultra, ultra racing, or it could be uh, short races, you know, 5Ks, 10Ks on the trails. Those are good too. So ask down below all about trail running shoes and trail racing shoes. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend and a great week ahead. We'll see you next Saturday, 5 p.m. Mountain Time for the Q&A. We're going to toss it back on the right to last week's Q&A all about road running shoes. That was last week's Q&A. That'll be on the right. And then I'll connect to the Q&A playlist that'll be on the left-hand side there. All right, everyone, you guys rock. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.